On the northern coast of Honduras, the Cuero and Salado rivers join and form an estuary. Here in 1987, a 13,000-hectare reserve was founded under the Honduran state. If you travel up the river into the reserve, you'll find healthy mangrove forests filled with wildlife and many species of plants. Near the coast is the community of Salado. There are about 70 households. Most of these families are dependent on fishing. Daily, they sail their dugout cayucas out into the ocean. The canoes are hollowed out from the Santa Maria. Locally, these trees are only found in the forests of the protected preserve. Firewood for their meal preparation also comes from the reserve. The sea grape is a favored wood for burning. This is cut from the edge of the beach, interrupting the wind and storm break that has been naturally created. The beach is littered with plastic, drifted in from everywhere. A branchy limb has collected a mass of clothing and shoes in its journey onto this beach. To arrive here, you take the narrow gauge railway from La Union. This train was built and used by the Standard Food Company. The school holds classes up to grade 6, after which the children have to board in the town of La Union to finish their education. It's not possible for most families so the children end their formal lessons. The jobs are few for these young people. A visitor center has been built and boats with motors are available for a tour. Some of the young people of Salado have taken the opportunity to become naturalist guides on the river. The visitors arrive by train and are quickly transported to another world. They have the opportunity to see the endangered manatee and travel upstream to view a wide variety of wildlife. Unfortunately, many species are poached by the local residents. Fallsbrook Center is dedicated to help the reserve become sustainable. An organic gardening project has been instituted. Interns from Canada help participants learn about composting and natural pest prevention, among other things. There are challenges but the interns have made themselves invaluable. Workshops on analog forestry have been held and participants learn about the importance of reforestation with a view of the forest as a complex unit consisting of a diverse group of species. Seedlings are planted with forethought, building a forest that sustains a community as well as other species. The area to be rehabilitated must have a plant survey compiled and then maps drawn, factoring in the land use, hydrology, elevation, soil composition, and many more factors. This planting design mimics both the structure of a natural forest and the ecological function of a natural forest. The invasive African palm is being removed in the areas being set aside for analog forestry. Various nurseries have been established throughout the community. The seeds have been collected, planted in bags, and then watered by the enthusiastic volunteers.
After they are established, they are planted out along the riverbanks in designated plots. Our hope is to stop the poaching and encroaching. Only by involving the community and making it their project will this be possible.